Recently, a friend asked me if I could do a full restoration from top to bottom. Well, let's do it, and I'll use two of my secret weapons, Topaz Labs 4 AI and Boris Optics. Let's go. All right, here we go. We're going to do a total uh, photo restoration on this picture of this handsome young rogue graduation picture from 1980. There's a few things wrong with it, so what I like to do is I like to split up what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of the subject, the background, and anything else in there that needs to be done. So the first thing I like to do is make a copy of the layer, and I'm going to make it a smart object. Because what I want to do is remove the color cast from this. So let's go into Filter, Topaz Labs, Photo AI. So what it'll do automatically, it wants to sharpen. That's in the autopilot settings. So once it's done that, I'm going to go to balance color. As you can see, we've got a color cast here, an orange color cast. Now I've got mine on autopilot to do it to 50%. And right away, you can see it's gone from orange to black, like it should be for a graduation robe. Now let's zoom to fit here. And so far, before, after. We're starting to get a little bit of skin tone in there, which is great. And the robe is black and my shirt is blue like it should be. All right, the next thing I want to do, let's zoom in here. As you can see, there's a lot of color bleeding and all kinds of stuff going on, even when it's turned to black. So what I like to do is go to remove noise. And I always pick the second one strong. So I'm given the option to go higher or lower if I need be. And it does an amazing job. As you can see, we've got a lot of dust and scratches we're going to get rid of later on. But the fabric on the robe is now smooth and black like it should be. Very cool. Okay, so next thing I want to do, let's go to the face and see if we can do something with the face. Make it just a little bit sharper. So I'm going to go to recover faces. There is only the one face and it knows that. So let's see what it does. Well, this is brilliant. It's got the hair, the hair's coming out. Even the flyaways are nice and crisp and clean. I like that. The teeth, the mouth, the glasses, the eyes, everything's standing out. We're going to stop right there with that. Now, this is also a good test. As you can see, we'll zoom in a bit. And once it draws again, you can see that the glasses are a little bit off here. Well, that's no problem because we're using a layer mask and photo AI as a plug-in. So we can go in after and fix that. I'll show you how. Zoom out. Let's zoom to fit, actually. It'll do its thing. Before, after. All right, we got a good start to this. So let's save it to Photoshop. Okay, very cool. Now, let's talk about that, those glasses. So we'll zoom in here. And as you can see, they're a little bit off when they tried to fix it. So that's no biggie. So we'll choose the layer mask. We'll grab our brush flow at about 5%. And I'm going to go just over that spot. Make sure we're painting in black. Just going to go over that spot of the glasses. A little bit up here. And it'll put back what was originally there. Now let's zoom in. The glasses are okay, but now you can see that the color cast and everything's back. No biggie. We change back to black. And we'll just get rid of that orange and everything there. Very cool. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to remove all these little orange dots. Now, the issue is, is there's way too many of them. So I'm going to use our friend Generative Fill to do that. So I'm going to make a stamp visible here. And I'm going to grab L for my lasso tool. And I'm going to go just around here like this down to the bottom and around and we'll just grab what we need to grab i'll fix this area here this is all we need to grab everything where those little orange spots were now up in generative fill let's type in remove go so now let's check out number one number two and number three. Oh, I'm digging number three here. All those orange dots are gone. And it's rebuilt the bookshelf in the same colors and in the same style from 1980. It's very cool. All right. So let's make a stamp visible there because we've accomplished that. And let's put that and the other one 
in a group and call it orange dots removal. All right, so here we go. Early on, before, after. It's starting to come through. All right, now let's zoom in a bit here and you can see all these dust particles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our layer a smart object in case we have to mess around with it later. And we're gonna go to our old friend, filter, noise, dust and scratches. Well, I've got it set to threshold 10, radius five. Let's bring down the radius a bit and see what happens. Four, three, two. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at about a four. And you can tell with the preview, four, after, all those little dots are gone. Now, but I'll show you what the cool part is. So let's hit OK, zoom out, and you can tell that all the dots are gone. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna remove it for the whole picture. We don't want that. All we want to remove are the little dots. So let's grab the layer mask and invert it. Control I, now the little dots will be back. But now we have control of what we get rid of. So let's go to our brush, make it about 25% flow. Make sure we're painting with white and I'll remove all the dots that I see. We only needed to do it on the parts that we see the dots, nothing else. I'll speed up the rest so you don't have to worry about it. All right, now we've removed all the little dust and all the little particles going on here. But what we have to contend with that we have to fix are these black ones here. Got a few dots that just aren't going away. That's no biggie. We're going to use the magic of the new remove tool in Photoshop, and it's amazing. So let's grab a new layer. We'll just call it removals, and we'll grab the remove tool. Now, I like to have it sample all layers, but I like to have remove after each stroke unchecked so I can color in each one of them. And instead of clicking the OK button, you can always use your enter key so you can get more done. So let's do this. Let's see where they are. Maybe, maybe even a couple of these scratches. I'm not gonna worry too much about them because I have a plan for those. All right, let's zoom out. And that looks like all of them. Now hit your inner key. And bam, they're all gone. Wicked. All right, so now what I'd like to do, stamp visible layer again, put the other layers in a group, and just simply call it removals. Before, after, before, after. Starting to look good. Now my plan for the rest of the robe is to do everything else in this picture in camera raw. So let's make it a smart object and go into camera raw. Now, the first thing I want to do is go up to the masks and select people. It finds everything. So let's hit every one of them. So we have more options to fix what we want. Now, the first thing I'm going to fix is the clothing. So let's kind of zoom in here. Now you can hit the Y key and see where your mask is. And it's looking pretty good here. But I want to remove a one bit and brush here. Well, I don't want it on the book and stuff. My hand. There we go. Y key to remove it. Now, what I want to do is go to the light. I'm going to bring down the highlights. And bring up the shadows a bit. Right about there. Now, I want to go down to effects. And I want to dehaze it a bit brings a little bit of life back into it. Now let's zoom in. Now I want to take the clarity and the texture and back it off a few. Give it a little bit of a softer look. Now the last thing I want to do, let's zoom out, is go down to curves. We'll grab curves and we'll bring it down. As you can see the robe starting to come to life and it's nice and black like it should be. That's wonderful, I love that. All right, so the next thing I want to do, let's look at the face. Let's work on the teeth. The teeth are a bit yellow, so we'll choose teeth. I'm going to bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows a bit. This is my plus 20 method. Plus 20, the highlights, 
minus 20. The exposure, 0 0.20. Now we'll go to color. And the temperature, minus 20. And we'll go to the saturation, minus 20. Now let's look and see what we got before, after. Zoom in. Now you can adjust it for however you feel. The saturation can come down just a bit more to make them a little bit whiter. Or you can grab your curves and just a hair bring them up. Teeth are looking better now. I'm not going to touch the hair. The hair is just looking way too cool here. I'm even digging the, all the flyaways. Now, I wasn't worried about all these dots in the background. Is what we're going to do now is go back up to the edit section. Zoom out. And I want to use the new lens blur. This is way too cool and should be used more often. So hit apply, it'll do its thing. And bam, blurred, and it's perfectly. And look how much it makes me stand out here. But let's move in just for a sec and see our edges and everything, especially around the hair. It took care of actually a few flyaways, which isn't bad. But what a person can do if they want like, I want to fix this area right here. Let's go down, and I want to blur that area. So let's go to Refine and hit Blur. I have a half-decent brush size there just for that section. Let's blur it out. And we can get deadly accurate if you want with all this kind of stuff. Blur certain sections out. That's looking way too cool. Okay, so now let's go back to the masks. Okay, let's go to the facial skin, Y key, check our mask, it's not bad. And all I want to do is bring down the highlights a bit, it's a bit much, shadows up a bit, and I want to throw a bit of saturation on there, just to give me a little more color. I like that, it looks just like my skin. All right, let's zoom out. Now what I want to do now is I'm going to grab the body skin. And I'm going to do the same as I did before. Bring down the highlights. Bring up the shadows just a touch. And we're going to grab a little bit of saturation for the skin itself. One of the cool things that I'm going to do here, I'm going to leave the rest of it alone. As you can see the lighting and how it was originally. What I'd like to do is create a new mask. And I'm going to do a radial gradient. Just right here. It's about the size that I want, and we'll grab it, and we'll move it just above my head. Now, the thing I want to do with it is we're going to subtract, and we're going to hit Select Subject. So we're going to subtract that out of the mask. Now, let's make sure it did exactly what I wanted, so we hit the Y key. And you can see that the radial gradient is still down here. So what we can do, subtract. Grab a brush and just remove it. What I'd like to do with this mask is turn off the Y key. What I'd like to do is go down to curves. And I'm going to put a dot in the middle and just bring it up. And as you can see, it gives this ethereal glow in the back to highlight where it is. Now hit your V key. And what we can do is move it around if we want up and over so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it right about there before after it just gives it that nice glow in the background now the last thing i want to do is create a mask for this carpet and stuff down here so we'll grab a brush make sure we got a decent uh we'll make sure the auto mask is on and we'll just go around here your Y key. Let's see where it is in the auto mask. Now, hold your Alt key down and you can remove what you don't want in that mask. It's very important to get the mask that you're looking for. Very cool. Hit the Y key again to make it go away. Now, what I'd like to do, again, let's go to the light and let's bring down those highlights just a bit. Bring up the shadows. What I'd like to do is bring down the blacks a bit. There, it gives it more contrast, gives it more texture. But also, I'm going to go to the effects and do the same as I did with the robe. 
and bring down the texture roughly about 20 or so 1920 same with the clarity so it looks really nice now you've completely changed this picture from what it was so let's hit OK, and it's completely changed the look. It almost gives it a 3D appearance to it with me here. I'll show you before, which is kind of monotone, few problems with it after. And it just sticks out, and I love the glow in the background there. Very cool. But I'm not done yet. I got one more trick up my sleeve that I like to use. So I'll make a stamp visible there, and I'm going to go to Filter, Boris Effects, Optics. This is one of my favorite tools to finish off a picture, especially a portrait. So Boris will come up, hit no to previous filters and masks. And I'm going to go to film stocks. And instead of all, I'm going to go to color films. Now what we can do is choose a color film. I love this first one. And it just gives it that wonderful film look. So that one's pretty good. I'll try a couple more here. Let's scroll down to the Kodachrome stuff. Oh, there, 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 no, there, no, no. Oh, that looks nice too. So I'm going to go back up top, see what we got here. Nope, I'm going to go down to the Kodachrome and use 35 millimeter 6. That looks amazing. So I'll hit File, Exit, yes. Now my graduation picture from 1980 looks a hell of a lot better than it did before after the optics just brings it all together very very cool well there you go from top to bottom restoration of my graduation picture from 1980 and all the tools that i use i like to dissect the picture first and get a plan on what i'm going to do if you're interested in topaz labs photo ai or boris effects optics check out my affiliate links in the description below it'll help me out a little bit there kids Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Don from Photo 911. See ya.